Suzuki SA officially launched the Grand Vitara and Toyota will be launching the new Urban Cruiser which is based on the Grand Vitara. You already know the vibes. And if you compare the two spec for spec, it goes without saying that Suzuki will win. But in terms of just looks alone, I think the Urban Cruiser looks better. Or should I say I prefer the Urban Cruiser. You don't buy a car based on just looks, so in this video we'll look at what else the Grand Vitara offers and also do a bit of comparison between the new Urban Cruiser and this Suzuki model. Welcome to another video. Look, whether we like it or not, we're all gonna end up buying SUVs because every car that is not an SUV is ridiculously priced. In fact, all new cars are ridiculously priced, but it's much better with SUVs because you kind of feel like you're getting more for your money because they are generally bigger and the human brain thinks big means value for money. Here's a practical example. Opel recently announced the return of the Opel Corsa Lite and it will cost 150,000 rands. With that amount you can get a brand new Grand Vitara GL and go home with 10,000 rands change. Which car would you buy between the two? Let me know in the comment section. Ok back to the Grand Vitara. The Suzuki Vitara Bracer is now gone and this is what we have. There's only two Grand Vitara trims. It's Grand Vitara GL and Grand Vitara GLX. In front they both look the same. You get LED daytime running lights, LED headlamps and a trapezoid grille. Yes they look nice, but the Urban Cruiser looks nicer. In terms of the side profile, all the models come with 17 inch alloys and the ones on the GLX are shiny and nicer, while the GL ones are plain and dull. On the GLX you also get a panoramic sunroof and there's no sunroof on GL. With the Toyota Urban Cruiser there's also only two trims, XS and XR. For 329,000 rands, the Urban Cruiser XX come with steel wheels and wheel caps. You only get nice alloys on the XR and it costs 347,000 rands for the manual and 370,000 rands for the automatic variant. If you opt for Toyota, forget about sunroof. The back looks really nice and my favorite feature is the LED strip across the tailgate. The boring part is the turning signals, indicators or whatever you call it. You put an LED light strip across the tailgate and complement it with kati kati turning signals. What's the thought process behind that? The boot space is 310 liters and this SUV comes with a full size spare wheel, no biscuits. The rear seats have a 60-40 split configuration and don't ask me why there's no light in the boot. I also don't know. When it comes to the interior, we'll start with the GL model. In the GL, you get cloth seats with hideous stitching. On the dash, there's a small 7-inch touchscreen and an analog instrument cluster. This is an entry-level model, but it comes with cruise controller standard and the 6 Apex. So whether you buy the GL or GLX, you get 6 Apex, and that's commendable. I like it when car manufacturers do the right thing, but I can't say the same about Toyota though. The entry-level Toyota Urban Cruiser has no cruise control and it only comes with two airbags. You must be smoking socks to opt for a car that only has two airbags over one that has six airbags just because of a badge. You know one day people will pay with their lives for being narrow-minded. I know a guy who owned a Toyota Fortuna and it got stolen. He bought another Toyota Fortuna. A few months later he got hijacked for the second time. Imagine thugs stealing you, your car and your kids. That's serious trauma if you ask me. And guess which car did he buy after being hijacked for the second time? I honestly think Mukai was on a suicide mission. Back to the Vitara. With the GLX you get some nice leather seats. It's artificial leather, but it's nice. If you choose the Toyota badge, that's all you are going to get. The badge. Forget about leather seats. The Grand Vitara GLX also gets a larger 9-inch touchscreen, head-up display, and surround view cameras. With Toyota, forget about all those things. The top of the range Toyota Urban Cruiser XR comes with a small 7 inch touchscreen. So basically, the top spec XR only competes with the entry level Grand Vitara GL. The GLX is on a league of its own. At the back, legroom is not a problem, and I already mentioned that both the GL and GLX get 6 Apex. Overall, the interior is decent. This SUV is powered by a 1.5-litre natural aspirated 4-cylinder engine 
with a power output of 77 kilowatts and 138 newton meters of torque. It's the same engine you get in the Suzuki Palino. The Grand Vitara drives and feels exactly like the Palino, the only difference is the high seating position. That's how the engine sounds with hard acceleration. Make the car bigger, but keep the engine the same. That's the approach Suzuki used here. And I feel like they should have used the 1.4 liter turbo engine from the Vitara. The 1.5 liter NA engine is powering quite a number of Suzuki models already. It's used in the Palino, Sears, Etiga, Jimny, and Grand Vitara. Even the Suzuki Fronks will most definitely come with the same engine. There's a six-seater MPV that we might get later this year, and I think it will come with a 1.5-liter natural aspirated engine producing 77 kilowatts and 138 newton meters of torque. Look, there's nothing wrong with using the same engine. A Polo GTI and a Golf 8 GTI share the same 2-liter engine, but the EA 888 is more powerful in the Golf compared to the Polo. Even the Tiguan has a 2-liter engine, but the power output is different. Suzuki only changes the body and puts the same engine. So whether you buy a Palino, Sears, Etiga or Grand Vitara performance is the same. Mazda is also obsessed with natural aspirated engines. Almost every Mazda car in SA has a natural aspirated engine except the BT50 which is based on the D-Max so I don't count it as a Mazda. And I think there's also one CX-5 variant that's turbocharged. The rest is just NA engines. I drove the automatic Grand Vitara variant and it's a 4-speed auto. If you are not into 4-speed autos, you can opt for a 5-speed manual. The car is nice and comfortable on bumpy roads and the only thing I didn't like is that it felt a bit tippy for the lack of a better explanation. When you are speeding, it feels like it wants to overturn especially around curves and the engine noise is unbearable when you are accelerating hard. This car comes with a 6-year 200,000 km warranty and an impressive 5-year 90,000 km service plan as standard. I repeat, 5-year 90,000 km service plan, even Chinese brands can't beat that. They only go up to 60,000 km and some come with no service plan at all, like the Beijing X55. With the Toyota Eben Cruiser, you'll get a 3-year 100,000 km warranty, that's just half the Suzuki warranty. The service plan is 4 years 60,000 kilometers. Do with that information what you will. In terms of pricing, the entry level Grand Vitara GL starts from 340,000 rands, while the entry level Toyota Evan Cruiser XX will be going for 330,000 rands. The XX is poorly specced, so it doesn't compete with the Grand Vitara GL. A direct rival of the GL, spec for spec, is the Evan Cruiser XR and it starts from 347,000 rands. That makes the Toyota plus minus 7,000 rands more expensive than its rival. When you factor in the issue of warranty and service plan, it's an easy win for Suzuki. The sweet spot in the Grand Vitara range is the GLX cause it has everything and it starts from 398,000 rands. So if you finance a 398,000 rands car for 5 years with no deposit and no balloon payment, at an interest rate of 11.25%, your monthly installment will be around 8,700. Add 1,500 for insurance and your monthly cost will jump to 10,200. If you add the cost of fuel, your total monthly cost will hover around 12,000 rands. The Grand Vitara GLX is a great package and it's a car I would buy with my own money. But the thing is I'm not into SUVs. There's one Grand Vitara variant I did not mention in this video and it's the Grand Vitara Hybrid All Grip. It costs 530,000 rands, and on finance that's roughly 11,600, just for the installment. I left it out on purpose because I have a lot of questions, so for now I'll just keep my opinion to myself. Over half a million rands for a Suzuki? That's definitely one of the questions you guys are gonna be asking. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in Mzansi context. Thank you.